What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rams Brothers. I'm your host, Dean, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother and the other great host of this show, Nick. And Nick, the Rams are on a bye this week, and I think we all need it for our own mental health. But first and most importantly, how are you, my good brother? Yeah, I'm good. I'm happy that this team has a chance to get healthy and, you know, kind of like regroup and get together and realize what's not working, what is working, and take on the challenges of the remainder of the season. They did a hell of a job of doing that last year, coming out of the yeah. bye. They were three and six, and they rejiggered everything. They reimagined some things and came out and won seven of eight and got themselves to the playoffs, won 10 games. Nobody's saying that this season is going to be the same. But if you look at the NFC West, after last night, the, uh, the most the Rams will trail um, in the NFC West is two games at this point, right, with, with 12 games to go. So San Francisco and Seattle are both at the top. They're both three and three. San Francisco obviously beat Seattle last night on Thursday night football. Arizona's two and four, and the Rams are one and four. So the season feels like it's far from over just because there's 12 games left. I know everybody's kind of in the headspace of let's tank, let's think to next year, what's going on with Stafford, what's going on with McVay. But there are some numbers that we're going to talk about in this episode that suggest that this team actually has a shot to put it together once they're fully healthy, which is expected by about week eight or so when they play Thursday night against the Minnesota Vikings. So here's what the schedule looks like for the remainder. So they're home against the, the Raiders uh, coming out of the bye on 10-20. And then 10-24, four days later, they turn it around. They play at home again against Minnesota, which is good. You don't have to get on a plane, go anywhere. You're going to be home for two straight weeks coming out of a bye. That's encouraging. And then they got to go to Seattle, who, what, won three straight and then lost three straight, which seems like they're kind of showing some of their true colors then you, you're home against Miami, you go to New England, then you're home against Philly again, similar to last year. You go to New Orleans, you're home at Buffalo, then at San Francisco, at the Jets, and then home against Arizona and Seattle. So you finish it off with two home games and two divisional games. So I, I, I think the way that this season is going to unfold is going to be really interesting. And I think the last thing that fans should do is entirely give up hope at this point. I I don't think the optimism is misplaced right now. When you look around the division, I saw JB Long made a tweet last night after the result of the Thursday night football game, talking about how we're not far back from, you know, yeah. being on top of this division, which is true. But if you're watching every game, it you know, there's not a lot to really hang your hat on right now, as this is a really good team. But around the league at least for like other expertise and podcasters and stuff, people have not given up on the Rams, which is shocking to me because I think it's, it's more of the mindset of, okay, they have McVay and they have Stafford. So I trust that combo. They were in this position last year. They came out of the bye and they were really strong. Uh, it's harder for me to get there right now. Just I get it. Just because I, I was at the game last week and it just felt like, up until the very end, they really didn't have anything that they could hang their hat on. They got lucky with a pick six that made the halftime score look a little more appealing. But I mean, from like top to bottom, they don't they don't look like a complete team to me. And San Francisco yeah. is, you know, they started off slow, but they're San Francisco. Right. They showed right. everybody right. last night in prime time who they are. They've and, done it. Kirk, Kirk Herb Street last night talked about how I think it was 2019 and 2020. They started very similarly and still found their yeah. way to the NFC Best Championship. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and I think your eyes are in line because all the numbers check out entirely based on what you just said. But if you go and look back, the Lions game, you're a coin flip away. You know, you could have the ball in, in overtime and have a chance to win that game. Same with Chicago and, and same with uh, the Packers. You both had opportunities at the end of the game to go ahead, go ahead and win it. And they just couldn't do it. They fell short. Um, and, you know, that's a lot has to do with the offensive line with, you know, the obviously the injuries to the two top target getters and wide receivers and Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, the defense being inefficient. But I want to start with the offense in this one real quick, because it's such an interesting uh, dynamic with everything that's going on with this offense, because they're the fifth most red zone trips per game are the Los Angeles Rams and the offense ranks 23rd in the red zone in touchdown percentage. So that those two things just clash instantly. Fifth most red trip, red zone trips, and only 23rd in red zone touchdown percentage. Like yeah. those two things should they don't they don't match up. Uh, passing is just below average at this point, and it's it's directly correlated with poor offensive line play plus injuries. They've allowed the seventh most sacks in the NFL, 64 total pressures, which is 10th most. 
and injuries to their top two pass catchers in Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup. And man, I, I miss seeing both of those guys on the field. They're they're throwing the ball right now, Nick. 61% of the time, they're 19th in pass yards per play, and they're 22nd in EPA per pass. So they're just a little pass heavy, and they're trying to kind of force something to where you don't necessarily have the guys. You don't have, have the horses who are going to be able to move this offense forward in pass catchers until the emergence of a guy like Jordan Whittington. But you, you just don't really have it. Your play design has to be perfect. There's this one recent play, or they've done it a couple times now, where – Jordan Whittington has gone in short motion and has released through the B gap in effort to create some more space. They're kind of tying it all together with the run game, but it's, it's really difficult when you don't have your two top pass catchers. Your pass heavy. I think that stat is a little misleading because one of the reasons why they're so pass heavy is because they get down in these games. Yeah, that's true. And then, and then you have to just be throwing the ball. It feels like they, 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 have yet to, I th and, and I think they could completely reinvent themselves after this bye. If you go out there and you on, on these scripted drives, you go out there and you and you score quickly because every single game they're playing from behind. They're having to like steal it in the last minute, like the Bears game where they had a chance and zapped it through the pick, or um, the, uh, the the Packers game last week where they just didn't have enough horsepower to get down there and even get an end zone shot, and it's just, it's it's not enough. Not with the with the men on the field, like you said. You mentioned Puka, Puka and Cup down. You don't have the guys to be out there to be this pass happy when when you actually have like an amazing back in Kyron Williams that can get you down there and and carry you and get you into the end zone. I feel like he's the only Ram with touchdowns this season. I know that that's not true, but that's what it feels like right now. You're spot on to where, you know, they're playing from behind, right? So yeah, you're going to obviously trend towards passing the ball more frequently, but the way that they're running the ball has been really successful. Rushing EPA per game, they're eighth overall. So they're per play, they're seventh overall. So your eyes are correct in that they're running the ball well. They're just not getting a lead. So they're not able to lean on the run game as, as frequently as they would like. The scheme is really good. They're tying the run and the pass together, I think, pretty well. They're utilizing both outside zone and duo concepts. So kind of a combination of what you've seen last year, plus everything you've seen from 2017 to 2022 in the Sean McVay era. They're number one overall in rushing success rate. They're in front of Kansas City and Baltimore in a year where pass attempts on average per game are at its lowest since 1992. So I mentioned 61% pass. They're 39% in terms of, of running the ball, which is 23rd overall, which makes sense as to why they're 24th in rushing yards per game. They're right under 100 because they're not running the ball frequently enough because they don't have a lead. But yeah. you're seeing the emergence of Kyron Williams. Obviously, he's a stud. He's a star in this league right now. You saw Blake Corum. He's got a little extra juice. Um, I think that these two guys together – lead some hope, right? Because if you can get a lead, you can stick to the run, you can control the clock and still implement some of those great things from a play design perspective, this squad's going to be just fine. Yeah. I mean, it's a completely different season right now. Yeah. If Kyron yeah. Williams doesn't fumble the ball on that drive after halftime uh, last week. And, you know, that's when they're like actually sticking to the run. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something like that happens and the entire game completely opens up and then you end up losing. And that's just not they're not good enough to overcome something like that. And I think things like that bite uh, McVeigh in the ass in, in a way where he gets worried and feels like he can't go back to it. Maybe he gets flashbacks from the Tampa Bay game when Cam Akers fumbled twice and they <laughs> almost blew it in the playoffs. But Coming off of an Achilles injury, too. I think that was his first game back that season. Which yeah, yeah. That unfortunate was unfortunate for him. I mean, him and Daryl Henderson together was like a B team on a team of superstars. Uh, <laughs> but still, it was just – that's the kind of thing that they can't overcome that. They're not good enough to overcome that. And But you have to. If you, if you want to win these games, you have to stick to the run. You have to try to overcome it and get to the point where you trust these guys – and I guess he just kind of leans back on Stafford and is like, well, I, you know, this is a guy I know I can trust. I went out and I got this guy and he's been here for me and he made this Super Bowl and he won on the yeah. 
on the final play. So they just go to the air, but you know, you don't have Odell and Cooper back there. You, you know, the, a couple of things, the defense is not good enough to overcome it. That's, no, not, yeah. that's point number one, right? These short yard field situations, it just puts the defense in an impossible spot being as bad as they are in terms of missed tackles, not finishing sacks is a really difficult situation to be in. But then also Nick, this is one of the highest paid offenses in the league. Like, without some of the injuries, they're responsible with capping off drives. They're responsible for finishing in the red zone and being able to stick to the run and control the time of possession. And without those two units working together, we know what happens. The defense is the one that, that takes the majority of the blame, um, when in reality the offense has been really just as, as, as painful in terms of being able to execute in really important situations, especially end of game. But here's what we're, what we're dealing with with the defense. Because the defense, they're, they're right now, they're top five in pressure rate. And that's without blitzing a ton. And they're that this is the only unit, the front four, the really young front four that just all came together last year and this year. Um, but they got the fifth few sacks. And I think they're going to be really, really good when they can finish plays. But this unit, second most missed tackles, mostly from our two stud linebackers in Troy Reeder and Christian Roseboom. Um, in terms of EPA per play, they're 32nd. EPA per rush, 0.08, which is third most. Rushing yards per game allowed, 157.6, which is most in the NFL. EPA per pass, um, plus 0.19, which is second most. Points per game, fourth most at 27.8. And yards per game, fourth most at 372.8. So this is a unit... Not only the, the linebackers, but the secondary has struggled mightily. And a lot of it has to do with injury, too. We finally got Darius Williams back. They shuffled some things. I think some of the, uh, you know, being able to, to switch and rotate secondary players is so important in today's NFL. Um, so I think they're going to be able to do that more frequently with guys like Charles Woods and Jalen McCullough. Um, and getting Darius Williams back, again, is massive. But, you know, all these things kind of work together. If the front finishes more sacks, the secondary looks better. If the front finishes more sacks, there's less missed tackles yeah. that take place. Like all of these things are kind of tied together, which is why it's been so stressful and, and frustrating. Yeah, I've been seeing people talk about Robert Sala, and <laughs> I know we watched him, um, you know, kick our ass on defense when he was with the 49ers a lot, and people are calling to bring him in for an interview, to get him on the defensive coordinating side and, and, and drop Shula. And in a little defense to Chris Shula, this personnel is really young, and the ones that aren't young are just not that great. I'm looking at the line. Yeah. yeah. Or, or we're hurt. And I think for Shula, these guys have to start wrapping up and making tackles because it's going to affect his position on this team eventually if they can't um, complete. And I love, like, I really like our young D line, but. I, I, it is so frustrating when it looks like you have a sack. It's like every game they're playing against yeah. prime Russell Wilson when it looks like a sack or a tackle in the backfield, and then he breaks a tackle, and all of a sudden it's like six extra yards. Give you a, give you a little optimism because I totally agree. Continuity in the coaching staff is important. Your Chris Joel is coming back next year, but yeah, I mean for Rob Sala, um, well, you know who knows what's going to happen, but for Rob Sala, maybe a defensive consultant position for next year. No, because I saw Mike Vrabel get fired as a head coach for the Tennessee Titans, came back as a defensive consultant for the Browns and an assistant to the head coach. So, hey, it's a possibility, something to keep in the back of your mind. But I don't think he's going to come in and take over the defense. And even if he does, like you mentioned, Nick, the personnel is just not that great. You're missing Ernest Jones. You're missing Aaron Donald. You're missing key members in the secondary. It's just not that great. It's what they told us last year where – we have an expensive offense, so we're going to put up a lot of points. So our defense is going to have to just help us out and not blow it, really. And we're asking too much of this of this broken defense to to do uh, to really do anything. Uh, I mean, the fact that 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 we were able to even get a pick six last week to keep us in that game um, is remarkable, and our offense just wasn't able to. It should have been a safety. Shouldn't have even yeah. been a pick six. Yeah. <laughs> Second most missed tackles, Nick, in the NFL. Uh, I mentioned it's mostly from the two linebackers. I think they're pretty equal in terms of missed tackles, in terms of splits. 12 per first downs allowed um, by penalty this season, which is the fifth most, mostly from the secondary. You see a lot of defensive holdings. You see a lot of pass interference calls. 
Um, linebackers are struggling, secondary struggling. I think those are two areas that I'd want to address via free agency or via trade. Uh, trade deadline, I believe, is after week nine. So it's something still to kind of take a look at if you want to kind of look around the league. Um, but I mean, you know, you look at free agents. I know a, a, a name that's been chopped around quite often is Devin White. And I know that, you know, a lot of people want to see Omar Spates. So you can look at Devin White. He's a name that I would keep an eye on. He was just released by the Eagles. He's a guy that can't get off blocks. He isn't great in the run game. So it's not a perfect fit by any means. I don't think he's going to be a drastic improvement over the current linebacking core, but he's a guy that can still play sideline to sideline and he's still pretty decent in coverage. And I think it's a low risk move for a guy who signed a one year prove it deal with Philly and never even got a chance to see the field. So I, there's one guy to keep in mind. Uh, I think Shaq Leonard's another free agent that we were talking about. Uh, Cunningham, Zach Cunningham as well, was another one that played with Philadelphia last year. Um, so, you know, some linebackers to keep your eyes on. But if it hasn't happened yet, I'm starting to think that it's probably not going to happen. So keep your eyes on that. And then another guy, familiar face. How about Troy Hill? Who remembers Troy Hill? The second it already had two stints with the Rams, similar to John Johnson. He could be another guy that you trade for. He's currently with Carolina. Um, is a guy that can come in instantly help the secondary. I think he's probably close to John Johnson's age. I think he's probably 32 or 33. So he's getting a little bit long in the tooth, but he's still a guy that that you know has been with Los Angeles and yeah uh, can probably be a plug and play guy at least in rotation outside and inside. So. Out of everyone you listed, he is the most likely because, as we know, the Rams love to bring people back. It's why we have Troy Reader yeah. right now. It's right. nobody else would have him on their team. I can say that with that. A lot of reunions with their squad. Team. Yeah, just as a band aid. It's usually what they do is they'll look back towards a reunion and they'll try and bring somebody in that has familiarity with the system. So Troy Hill would be one that I would keep my eyes on as well. I'm just over band aids. You know, I'm over having to come back and have like a Stafford fourth quarter miracle. Like let's just, yeah. you know, like let's put together like a full game. It, I, and you know what? You're going to be playing the Raiders. It's going to be another game where you might have to go on silent count because it's a home game, but there are millions of Raiders fans in Los Angeles, but that shouldn't matter. This, if the, I mean, I know we're not doing a Raiders preview right now. We're going to do that next week, but that should really like, if you lose that game, I don't like um, my optimism is out the window. I oh, a hundred percent. And you're one in five, your season's buried a hundred percent. I totally get it. And then you really kind of got to look inward, especially coming off of a buy at home and see what changes can be made instantly. Uh, yeah. But I think some good changes are on their way. I'm tired of seeing the Matthew Stafford passing yards in the fourth quarter stat, the comeback stat. Um, I think they're going to lean on the run game. I think they're going to really kind of put emphasis on those scripted drives early coming out of the half and to start the game. Um, I think some of their run schemes, have, have been just exactly what we had been asking for. And now with the health of your offensive line, you should be able to lean on that more frequently. And the pass game is going to get better because the offensive line is getting better and because the receivers are getting healthier. So uh, I'm hopeful. I, I really am. But um, we'll talk about the Raiders more next week in our preview. But, Nick, I think it's that time of the week. Nick's picks. One more time. to fire that producer. Nick, can you give us a recap of what happened last week? So, first of all, welcome back to Nick's special picks. Uh, we are in week five already. No Rams bet, uh, no Rams to bet on, so Dean's locks actually have a chance to hit. As for Nick's picks, let me answer your question right now. We are showing flat to budget here, which is film production speak for, we are not truly revealing our final numbers at this moment because we are in the red. We are not going to show how much we have won and lost yet because we are in the red. Keep that in mind if you're ever working for film. Um, last week was a heartbreaker. Uh, lost on a fourth and goal touchdown from the Cowboys. The, uh, a, a game that I had money on that hurt me so much. I had to go outside at 10 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time and go to the park and touch grass because it, it, it hurt me in my soul. But that's all right. We got more fun games. Uh, I'm a big fan of Slate this week, so let's just get right to it. Why not? Uh, first, let's uh, let's hear the theme song and then the picks. You know, the Rams have a bye week this week, so my heart can't be broken. <laughs> That's what's got me feeling really nicey. 
plus another chance to bet on a game not even in America, and it's England's team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence last week, 371 yards and two tutties, and a rating of 119. Oh, I couldn't do that pregame warm up. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you know, the Rams have a bye week this week. <laughs> Oh, man. That was absolutely perfect. That was really fun to make. That was that was really fun. <laughs> Dean keeps sending me those screens. <laughs> Dude, that's my favorite thing in the world. Got me feeling nicey. It's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> that one's got me feeling really nicey. It's got the shirt. Oh, oh, your, your impression also. 10 out of 10 spot on. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean you know, it's not uh, Frank Caliendo good, but it, it's fine. <laughs> what do you got for us this week? All right, so Jags, Bears, and London. So, yeah, if you haven't guessed it, we're going back to London for game one. So everybody is saying now that Caleb Williams has grown into himself. He's the guy. They found him. Chicago can stand down as a franchise. They have their man. And it took – all it took was they had to play two of the worst defenses in the league the Rams and the Panthers. I got to be honest. I just don't trust him hundred percent yet. He's gaining confidence. He has a great defense behind him. So he can win these games, but I think the Jags finally found themselves last week. They got an in-division win. Trev Lahr looked like the chosen one. And now they have a double stint in London where they're two and zero in Tottenham Hotspur. Um, I know that's not, that's not how you're supposed to say it. I've been enjoying Bears football, but much like my Florida Panthers, they will easily take down a Bears team, whether it be the Boston Bruins or the Chicago Bears. Sorry to go a little hockey on you and speak a little French. This game is a pick em, so I'll take Jags money line at even money, 28 to 10. I think the Jags have no problem coming out on top. It's one of those situations where you wake up, it's 8 o'clock, and the Jags have a 17-point lead already, and you're feeling nicey. <laughs> All right. I don't. I, I mean, Bears are three and two. I thought Caleb Williams has been playing pretty well, and I have no faith in the Jags until they fire their coach, and then I'll bet on them. But I get it. Good pick. Yeah. I mean, listen. There's two things you got to do every year. When the Jags are in London, you bet on the Jags, and when it's Thanksgiving, you bet on the Lions. It's just that's just how it is. Fair. What's next? Cardinals at Packers. Jordan Love. He's lucky to get a win last week. The Rams almost found a way to come from behind and steal the game from these Packers, but at the end of the day, our offense just couldn't cut it. Love gifted us seven points, one of the worst pick six I've ever seen. It's very hard to escape a win uh, when you do something like that, but the Rams are very bad and find new and exciting ways to lose each week. Right now, currently, the Cardinals are a much better team than the Rams are. Kyler is cooking. They have star wide receivers on the field. They're not injured. Their defense isn't relying on drop balls to get stops. I think overall this Cardinal team is going to start raking up wins and taking it to the next step to be a contender. I don't think that that's shocking. I think Gannon is coaching them really well, and Kyler is Kyler. You know, he can make wins kind of like appear like like he did last week. Packers, I don't know, man. I wasn't impressed last week. Uh, we make everyone look good. We is in the Rams, and you guys barely hung on. I don't have faith in you long term. The line right now is set at Cardinals plus five and a half. Um, I'm just going to take the points 31 32. Maybe the Cardinals pull it out, but give me those points at plus five and a half Cardinals just so we're not sweating the entire time. Deal. Uh, I, I don't, I like the Cardinals to cover in that game too. I think that's a good bet. They're coming yeah. off of what a tough week. Did they win last week? Yeah, they beat San Fran. Yeah. All right. Well, the week before was tough for them. So they've been on a little bit of a roller coaster. So, yeah, we'll see. They're playing pretty decent football. They were good enough against us, put up 41 points against us. So, yeah, we'll see what they do against the Packers. Decent bet. And then Browns at Eagles. So I get that the Browns are looking terrible. They're saying Deshaun's not the guy, but they paid him so much money that you kind of have to roll with them from week to week. Last week looked like he quit on the team in the fourth quarter. And now you have to go uh, up against Vic Vangio's defense off a of bye in Philly. A lot of contributing factors here to like the Eagles, but nine and a half points is what they're giving the Browns. And that is a lot of points to give. Wasn't Sirianni like on the brink of being fired headed into the bye? They're saying, they're saying that, yeah, if they lose to the Browns this week coming out of a bye in Philadelphia, Sirianni's going to get fired. Yeah. I mean, you know, his team is favored by nine and a half points. 
the Browns defense is still really good. And all the Eagles struggles have been offensively out of good faith. I cannot let the Eagles be nine point favorites to anyone and, you know, just stand idly by. I just, it just doesn't compute in my brain. I don't like the Browns at all. This isn't a Browns bet. It's a plus nine and a half points bet to whatever team you want to put in front of the Eagles. 21-19, I think the Eagles probably eke it out. I think it's a defensive battle. Um, but we're going to roll with that plus nine and a half points, and we're going to take the under 42 and a half as well. Hmm, interesting. I think they're getting uh, Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown back. So you know, they're going to be a little, little bit of a tougher out um, offensively. But you're right. I, struggles, quarterback, you know, all that stuff has, has been uh, – has been a thing for them. I was really hoping the Browns were, I mean, AJ Brown back is huge for the Eagles, but I was really hoping that the Browns were going to be getting Chubb back, but it looks like he's not coming back in this game, which sucks. But, you know, it's been over a year. We haven't seen him. I feel like he can electrify that offense when he does come back. Yeah. Next week, I think he's going to be coming back, uh, if not a little bit later. But we got any quick picks for us? Yeah. Um, I'm, let's just run it back real quick. I'm taking the Jags in London. I'm taking uh, the Cardinals plus five and a half. I'm taking the Browns plus nine and a half. And then I'm also taking the under 42 and a half and Eagles Browns. And then my quick pick is going to be another under, uh, under in Goff versus Dak, Lions versus Cowboys revenge game. Lions can control the clock if they go up a lot. They have an exceptional run game. And I just think, you know, Dak this year is a, is a pick machine. So who's to say, even if the Cowboys get to the red zone a lot, that he's not going to throw an interception. Um, so, yeah, I mean, those are – that's what I'm running with. 52 and a half is a lot of points. Last time the Lions uh, had an over under that high was against the Cardinals, and they didn't even come close to hitting that at 52. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think I'm going to uh, go off of that, and I'm going to go with my lock of the week as the Browns to cover against the Eagles because that nine and a half points is absurd. So is. I'll take you back off of you because I'm, none of my locks ever hit. Dean is also showing flat to budget right now, as they say. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not feeling nicey whatsoever. No. Uh, just a reminder, guys, that this episode is brought to you guys by Autograph Referral Code Rams Bros, R-A-M-S-B-R-O-S. Make sure to download the app and punch in our referral code. And lastly, make sure always to... Like and subscribe. We appreciate you guys. Enjoy the bye week. Try to relax a little bit, and we'll be talking to Rams before we know it again. Yeah, and you know, if you don't want to be a fair weather organization with with fair weather fans, Rams fans, you should be in consuming Rams content even when they're bad. Other franchises still care when their teams aren't good. So I don't I, I don't care that it's Los Angeles. You should still give a crap about the Los Angeles Rams. I don't care no, if you go outside and it's, it's nice. It's LA. Day. There's so much to do. I don't care. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Give a shit about the Rams. All right. I'm over it. <laughs> I agree with Mick. I echo that. We'll talk to you guys soon. Listen to this episode. Like, subscribe, share it with your friends, and we'll talk to you again soon. Peace. Download autograph, Rams Bros. Carl Code. Thank you, everybody. Peace.